Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Justin Demos from VDog. Today, we're going to talk about dogs going vegan. So let's get into it. Tell us about VDog, Justin. Well, VDog is a vegan dog food. We've been around for about 16 years now. Um, our formula is nutritionally complete. Uh, people seem to love it. We offer kibble and both a regular size and a mini size. And then we offer various treats like breath bones and wiggle biscuits. And uh, there's a bunch of information on our website. So, yeah. So what exactly does nutritionally complete mean? Uh, it's AFCO approved, which means it basically has everything that a dog would need, including taurine and, and uh, the amount of protein and like crude fats and, and that sort of stuff. So it meets all those levels. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's on par with any commercial dog food that you would buy for your dog and you can like rest easy knowing that they're getting everything they need. Mm -hmm. And what is ACO? AFCO. Yeah. <laughs> I guess AFCO. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is, what is that? Yeah. the go-to nutrition certification, you know. Okay, platform. okay. Nah. Yeah, I mean, because I think a lot of people want to make their dogs vegan, but they don't really know how. And so um, that's reassuring that, you know, the food has enough nutrition for a dog. Now, mm -hmm. how about, I mean, since dogs are naturally carnivore, is there anything... I mean, you would say, because dogs are descendants from wolves, is there anything, like, suppose you try, your dog's been eating, you know, carnivorous food for a long time, and then you start them on a vegan diet, is there a transition you have to make, or do you just do it right away? What if your dog doesn't like the taste of the new food? I mean, how, yeah, how does, yeah. is there anything you do to make it more meatier? Is there anything you guys do? What do people... How do people make their dogs vegan, I guess? Sure. All right, yeah, okay. Uh, first thing I'll say is that um, dogs are actually omnivores technically because uh, wolves, they departed from wolves, along, kind of evolved alongside humans for about the last 15, 30,000 years, you know? And in that time, dogs or wild dogs at that time were mostly scavengers. And they were buddying up with humans to kind of, um, that was just the best place to get food at the time. Uh, and humans were feeding them both, you know, grains, but also meat and, and vegetables and whatever scraps was, was left over, right? Uh, and through just like breeding and, and natural evolution and just like what dogs survived through that time, um, you've got your modern dogs that can basically access all the nutrition in meat or in various vegetables and fruits, right? So, you know, uh, as long as you make a nutritionally complete uh, formula, you, you shouldn't have a problem switching them from uh, a diet that's omnivorous or purely carnivorous to a vegan diet. Uh, you know, that said, every single dog um, is different. And the adjustment period, we usually say like you mix a fourth of the new food in with the old food, you know, and, and then do that for maybe a week and then do half a cup, like half of it, uh, the old food, half the new food, and then slowly transition them over just so their stomachs have a, uh, a chance to uh, adjust, right? Yeah. Um, if they're having, you know, if they're not as like uh, interested in V-Dog as they are in their old food, um, you know, that's just a palatability thing. And what people do is they can add nutritional yeast to the top of their food, or we have this recipe on the website and I do this for Finn, my dog. Um, uh, you mix some various oils like flaxseed oil and, and sunflower oil and coconut aminos and maybe a little bit of liquid smoke. And you just mix that in a bottle and then you like squeeze it on a little bit. And Oh, that's great. Uh, oh yeah. They, he goes crazy for it. So Okay, that's a good because I think it makes it taste more meaty, I guess. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. what are the benefits of dogs going vegan? Yeah, okay. So there's a couple of different ways of answering this. Um, any kind of dogs with allergies, especially to exotic uh animal products, actually, um uh are gonna benefit from switching to V-Dog because they're not gonna encounter those. Their skin usually clears up, 
they have ear problems, those will clear up, um, that sort of stuff. Uh, so that, um, a lot, I also think about this question in, as you compare VDOG to other uh, formulas, right? So we use, uh, you know, all plant ingredients, but a company that uses uh, any kind of meat-based ingredients, um, there's the four Ds and a lot to get the price down on the, those ingredients, they're usually using animals that are dead already or diseased or disabled. They're just really, you would never eat what, uh, even if you were an omnivore, you would never eat that's terrible kind of meat that's going into a, a meat-based formula, really. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of scary to think about it as well. And I mean, we've done various studies where, um, where we monitor the blood levels of dogs who do switch to V-Dog and um, we've seen benefits across the board, uh, you know, on all those levels. So, uh, yeah. How about puppies? Cause I see that some of the dog companies, they have puppy food, but I didn't see anything like that on V-Dog. Does it matter? What's the difference between puppy food and adult dog food? Yeah. Puppies are different because yeah. they require more, just more. Uh, they need more calories. They're growing, you know, they're not, V-Dog technically is a, an adult formula. Uh, we've seen people use it for puppies and they add things like uh, flaxseed or coconut oil or whatever, just to get the calories up and get the healthy fats in there. And that's really what a puppy is going to need in addition. Behind the scenes, we're always working on formulation that is gonna be including puppies or mm -hmm. maybe a puppy dedicated puppy formula or an all life stages formula. So, you know, especially nowadays, it's, it's not easy sourcing ingredients with the supply chain issues and everything. And, yeah. and we wanna make uh, formulas, whether it be for puppy or for an adult dog, that's affordable. We don't wanna make it inaccessible to people because it's so expensive, right? So that's the kind of, um, that's the kind of obstacles that we run into, yeah. right? So, it's just kind of a, uh, a choice you have to make at some point, you know, but we are, we are looking into that all the time. I also noticed you guys don't have wet food. Is there a reason why are you guys working on a wet food formula? We are working on wet food formula. We have a formula that the, the, um, a lot of times it's just um, comes down to manufacturing and packaging and, you know, how can we make it affordable? That sort of thing, right? How do you make it affordable without sacrificing quality? Because that's not something we never want to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, I remember the formula when, it, when we first developed it. We were actually trying it. We would just try the formula ourselves for a wet dog food. No, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I mean, I've actually seen this at veg fests where people will try the our treats or or anything because mm -hmm. they don't want to feed anything to their dog that they wouldn't eat. Yes. Yeah. And the, the the ingredients are human grade, so it's like, it, why wouldn't you? I mean, you could. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't snack on V-Dog, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, some of the dog food looks really disgusting and unappetizing, and I could see why dogs appreciate human food. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or human grade food. Mm -hmm. I could see that. Now, I've seen some stuff online where people are saying that dogs are supposed to eat organ meats is there any specific reason why a dog should be eating that I mean for me I just that kind of I mean even for for humans I mean as a medical doctor eating organ meats is not really good for you especially if you have gout or something right mm. but I can't imagine I mean I suppose dogs are a little bit different and what kind of nutrients they require from humans do you, can you comment on that Sure. I think the thinking here is that um, their ancestors were eating um, all of an animal, therefore they should be eating all of an animal. But again, the, the divergence from wolves that dogs took it is kind of astounding. Also, this kind of the direct involvement that people have had with the evolution of dogs as well through various breeds. I mean, there's only wild dogs, so only maybe a few breeds. And then, you know, we've developed many different kinds of breeds, right? 
mm-hmm. uh, before my time, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, like humans, uh, and luckily since dogs are omnivores, they can essentially live off of any kind of diet. I mean, I can't speak exactly to whether or not an organ diet is, is, um, is beneficial to them or to, is, um, is a hindrance to their health, right? Uh, but I can say that V-Dog is supplying everything that a dog needs for the full cycle of their life, you know, minus being a puppy, right? You, you mm-hmm. need to add, have some sort of additive into the formula. But What's like, I can be vegan my whole life mm-hmm. um, and thrive that way. I could also be an omnivore my whole life. And, you know, the argument, the, the jury is still out whether or not I'm, that's better for me or what. But like, uh, I'm just saying that if your dog eats one kind of food, they are just as likely to thrive on a different kind of food as long as it meets their nutritional guidelines. Yeah. So what do puppies need extra that um, is extra than adult dogs, I guess? It's just more of it is what you were saying? Yeah, more in the sense of like they're burning way more energy. Yeah, Yeah. they're they probably need more protein just because they're putting on mass. Right. They they need those healthy fats to just be to develop in a healthy way. And then and then, you know, at their adult stage. And just be reliant on bee dog as well. And it's not that much. It's like, like I said, you could add coconut oil, add flaxseed oil, add these things that you want just on top of the, the bee dog kibble itself. Um, probably you also would increase the amount of bee dog kibble that you're giving them mm-hmm. just so they're, you know, because they're burning through those calories very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Now, how about historic experience? Do we have any historic experience with dogs going vegetarian or vegan in different societies uh, i know you talked a little bit about people just feeding them the on war diet but um how about specifically just a vegetarian diet um historically i mean i guess it's a relatively new thing right i mean there's been this in society in general it's there's been this kind of thread that dogs are carnivores because they come from wolves Mm -hmm. um and as far as i know company-wise b-dog was the first on the scene to try to develop a formula for dogs that was strictly plant-based right uh and that was 16 years ago so i think before that historically it's not been something widely publicized or widely um adopted Mm -hmm. uh uh, so there's that. I think in the, the 16 years we've been around, though, we've seen, you know, nothing but positive feedback. So, you know, it's kind of hard to argue with that. I mean, we are, we do do studies just to vet V-Dog as well. And we welcome other people to vet it as well. Just like do independent studies because we want the information we want it just as bad as anybody else does right mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that's why we'll fund our studies we'll um we'll also encourage people to do their own and talk to their vet about it you know anything that works for them so what kind of studies have you guys done on VDoc? oh um i know there's a couple ongoing and there's going to be they're going to be published in uh, various journals. I don't know what journals exactly, um, but I can also give you that information. At some oh, point. no, I was just wondering, like, if it's about anything specific, like, is it mostly about, like, do you follow dogs through their lifetime? Is mm. it like, a control study, a cohort study? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, do you kind of, like, test them for their nutrition, um, you know, off the V-Dog and then have a comparison on a dog's not on V-Dog? Yes, essentially that, right? And I think in one of the studies, we actually included a couple puppies. The, the person who was um, kind of conducting the study had some puppies and, yeah. and wanted to include them. And uh, as far as I know, it's basically monitoring their, uh, their blood levels, monitoring their just their general health, uh, checking them out, making sure everything's good, that sort of thing. 
So I think, um, you know, I've seen some uh, vets uh, talk about vegan versus non-vegan and some vets are, you know, supportive of a vegan diet for dogs, but others are against it. What would you say to, you know, somebody who is saying that dogs are not getting necessary nutrients from a vegan diet? Uh, I would recommend if a vet has particular questions uh, to email VDOG. We have resources on the website about various health things if they're interested. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the benchmark for this is the AFCO approved uh, foods. And if they're comparing us to any other food, we are AFCO approved. Uh, so I, I'm not sure exactly what they're saying at that point, um, other than maybe expressing concern about the newness of it, right? In which case, I would recommend they just reach out to us and try to gather some information. Maybe we can put them in touch with one of our vets or our nutritionists to kind of uh, reassure them. Um, but I do think there is, um, since it is a relatively new thing, I think vets are just a little bit hesitant. Uh, but all the um, studies that we've done, all the, the, the 16 years that we've been in business, the, the anecdotal evidence that we have from all of the testimonials and all the reviews from people, you know, I feed my dog V-Dog for the last four years. Um, so, uh, and his blood levels are great. I mean, I always recommend people talk directly to their vet. And if they're on V-Dog and the vet tests their levels and everything looks great, I'm not sure why the vet would recommend they change their diet. Uh, so, and that's why, I mean, just like with humans, you know, we go in for regular checkups. That's why I recommend people go in, um, they take their dog in for regular checkups with their vet. And, you know, even if there are some sort of like deficiencies in your dog, say your dog is, I mean, just like I, a person might have an iron deficiency, you just want to supplement if your vet says so. But it, it, it probably doesn't mean changing their food because like I said, we are AFCO approved. So um, we're just like any other food, basically. Yeah. And, you know, I think dogs get some of the things that humans get. And so, I mean, if dogs get heart disease or anything like that, I'm sure, I, I mean, to some extent, it might be good for them to be on a vegan diet to cut. And even the, the diseases of the joint, probably when they have joint pain, it's probably helpful to be on a vegan diet just because there's less allergens. Sure, sure. I mean, I've definitely seen a lot of our testimonials suggest as much, uh, whether it be allergies or yeah, any, mostly allergies. I've seen like hundreds of people saying like, oh, I switched this, switched to V-Dog and then allergies just cleared up almost in that week. You know, there's just their uh, skin. I've seen a lot of um, people with uh with pit bulls, like their skin just is totally red and then they switch to V-Dog and then it clears up in a couple of weeks. And yeah, so it can really make a difference. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, the carbon footprint too, that something like, you know, a company like V-Dog makes on the planet versus, you know, a different kind of carnivorous dog food is very vast. I mean, it's just, there's so much less carbon footprint that, you're making by feeding your dog V-Dog, you know, because some dogs are really big and you feed them a ton of food. And so throughout their lifetime, you're buying all this food and you could be, you know, supporting, you know, some company that is doing a lot of good things like mm -hmm. V-Dog versus supporting a company that um, is actually su supporting animal suffering, you know? So I think it's appealing to a lot of people. Now um, you were telling me before we started the show also about, what you do with the leftover V-Dog bags. Can you tell us a little bit about that? There was a place in Hawaii that you said. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Gentle World is what we, we tracked them down, right? Um, and uh, we send them damaged bags. Occasionally, we get damaged bags. There's like a little tear or something, right? And mm -hmm. we tape it off. But we don't want to sell that commercially. We just want to sell bags that are completely intact. But, you know, through the transit process or through... The warehousing process it just a couple that well you know depending on how big our um orders are 
uh, you know, bags will get damaged. And in, in which case we set them aside. And then if nonprofits contact us, we'll go ahead and donate those uh, minus the cost of shipping. And uh, they go to rescues, they go to sanctuaries, right? And uh, one in particular, Gentle World in Hawaii, uh, has reached out to us many times and we've um, gotten them pallets through a freight forwarder. And so, yeah, so I don't know exactly where they're based in Hawaii, but maybe- This is on the big island, you said, yeah? I saw the website was on the big island. It was on the big island. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're on Oahu with ThinkTech, but yeah, I think they're on the big island. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's then, cool. Yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, if you could tell everyone how VDAW got started. Yeah, so originally, um, the current president, Darren, uh, his father actually founded the company. So it's been in his family uh, this whole time. Uh, but it, it just basically started as... Um, Darren's father wanted to create an alternative for dogs, uh, wanted to be plant-based, wanted to live a plant-based life, um, wanted to lower their carbon footprint um, and just started researching alternatives about that. And I mean, it's funny, I've heard Darren tell me stories about how, you know, when they first got started, they would just, um, they would have to like do, make deliveries themselves. And, and then it just caught on from them just doing their due diligence and, mm -hmm. and making a formula that actually worked. And, and yeah, that's how, it, that's how it got started. That's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. um, I think that's great. I know that a lot of other, I, I've seen some other vegan dog food pop up actually, cause I've been doing searches and it looks like there's a bunch of other new options as well. So it's it must have, I guess V Dog was the first one, but I think other mm -hmm. people are, there's such a bigger vegan population now and they're looking for more alternatives. Are most of the people who are buying V Dog food, are they mostly vegan or people who are just looking for food for their dogs that is not allergenic? Yeah, I would say most of the people. Uh, I'm guessing, right? Uh, but the sense that I get is that most of the people who are buying V-Dog are themselves plant-based. Yeah. Um, but that's not to say that they're exclusively. I mean, I know a lot of people do feed their dog V-Dog because of allergies. Um, and we are always reaching out to omnivores to see if they'll try it. We have our free samples available on the website. So if anybody even wants to consider it, mm -hmm. just because they want to lower their their family's carbon footprint you know if their dog can thrive on this um it's easy enough for them to switch out and it's competitively priced with any other dog food any other you know comparable dog food so uh you know that's something to consider if it's an easy switch for you mm -hmm. and your dog will will is interested in it yeah um you know why not kind of but that's a you know harder sell just for the reasons we've outlined um, mm -hmm. in this talk, right? A lot of people just come to the conversation thinking that dogs are absolutely carnivores, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I think that I read something in your website, actually, can you show the website um, that people in India have been feeding their dog vegetarian for a really long time? So, mm -hmm. you know, is, is that true? So that actually dogs can thrive on a vegetarian or vegan diet, probably. So. Yeah, and I've heard um, that a lot of the prescription formulas are just by default vegetarian. Mm -hmm. um, they use maybe like a pulverized soy or, you know, um, they'll, they'll probably use eggs in there as well and those certain formulas. But um, yeah, if you just want to be a completely plant-based one, there's V-Dog. And like you said, there's other alternatives that are popping up, you know. I just love, I mean, those companies are you know, seeing uh, an opportunity in the market to offer this kind of um, formula. And I think V-Dog's mission has always been uh, just to encourage, uh, you know, a movement away from animal cruelty, uh, a movement away from, or a movement towards a lower carbon footprint, lower water consumption, all that stuff. And on. Um, I think that's what drew me to the company in the first place is that that's kind of the core 
mission. Uh, I know that, you know, the company actually takes like a much lower like profit margin just because they, they're really just interested in making things affordable for customers so that the barrier to entry to a um, to less animal cruelty is, is not so high, right? So, yeah. yeah, that's great. Um, well, we're out of time now, so we have to wrap it up, but I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. This is Healthy Planet on Think Tech live streaming network series. We've been talking with Justin Demos from VDOG. Thanks to all for being here. And thanks to our broadcast engineer and the rest of the crew at Think Tech for hosting our show. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. I'll see you on May 12th for more of Healthy Planet on Think Tech, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet. Our next show will be about vegan nutrition with our special guest, Dr. Michael Clapper. If you have ideas for the show, please contact me at healthyplanetthinktech at gmail.com. Check out my website at graceinhawaii.com for more information on my projects, including future show guests. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.